In this video, we're going to talk about people who influenced Charles Darwin. Uh, those people are going to be James Hutton and Charles Lyell, John Baptiste Lamarck, and Thomas Malthus. So remember, in the science world, a theory is something that has multiple lines of evidence, but this evidence was not usually discovered by one person. Think about the structure of DNA that was helped discover by Watson and Crick, in addition to Robin Franklin's work and Shargoff's work. So there were a few people that helped Darwin get this idea going on how nature changes over time. A few of those people were James Hutton and Charles Lyell. Uh, now they concluded something that was very obvious to us here in present day. Um, they, just through observations and uh, looking around, they concluded that the Earth is very, very old. Uh, the Earth is in fact 4.6 billion years old. However, uh, they people at that time thought the Earth was about 6,000 years old. So big difference there. How they were looking at this, how they made sense of this, they looked around And they said there are multiple ways that the Earth can change. Uh, something that you are already familiar with is volcanoes. Uh, volcanoes, when they erupt, they spew lava. And if they erupt in the ocean, they can actually form new land, like Hawaii. Hawaii is a volcanic island and would not exist without a volcano eruption having occurred. Uh, James Hutton and Charles Lyell also said that the Earth is still changing. Uh, something we can see today is earthquakes. Take a look here. Earthquakes have the power to physically separate uh, the Earth based on tectonic movements. They can raise the land up and down. In here, uh, one of the roads was sank. Uh, and we're talking by a few feet. So what James Hutton and La Charles Lyell concluded is that the Earth has changed in the past, and the same ways that it changed in the past are still happening today. If you think about it, we still have volcanoes, we still have earthquakes. Um, so if the earth is changing, well, of course it's going to change the environments that animals live in. Another individual who helped influence Darwin is the idea, uh, this guy, Thomas Malthus. Uh, now, he was a uh, economist, and he, just through his observations of, of nature and other animal populations, is he always noticed that there are always more individuals in a population than can survive. And as he was growing up in the 1800s, he recognized that the human population was growing at a very, very quick rate. Uh, and he said that more humans are being born uh, than are dying, so our human population would increase. And he reasoned that the laws of nature are no different for those animals than us humans. So he said that eventually, if we continue on this path, humans will eventually run out of resources. And that got him thinking as to, got Charles Darwin thinking as to, well, if animals are running out of resources, they might be competing with one another. And if they compete with one another, some might be just a little better at doing it than others. And then the last guy, uh, John Baptiste Lamarck, uh, he's probably the, the best example to talk about because his ideas were right, uh, but a little wrong at the same time. Uh, Jean Baptiste Lamarck, uh, he said that organisms want to become perfect that they want to become unique and they can actually gain features, acquire, they can acquire features to help them survive in their environment. Now, he believed that acquired traits could actually pass on to the offspring, enabling species to change over time. Okay, so a big thing that he got right was he was the first guy that said, hey, animals do change over time. However, he was wrong in how they do it. Think about a scar. If you have a scar, that scar is not going to be passed on to your offspring. Same thing with a child or uh, with children, right? Um, if you look at this really buff bodybuilder guy, really buff bodybuilder girl, uh, if they have an offspring, the kids not automatically come out super buff, right? So that was that was wrong. Um, here's a nice, another nice visual on how to interpret Lamarck's work. Uh, he said that uh, animals believe, or he believed that animals adapted through use and disuse. So if you use something, it'll stay in the population. If you don't use something, it'll go away. All right, so in this example, uh, he was saying that giraffes, they have long necks because they would stretch their necks to try, try to get up here to try to get the leaves. Yeah, so giraffes were then able to feed. However, those offspring in this example, the offsprings would then be born with a little bit longer necks, so they would be able to reach the trees. 
that's not how it works. So Charles Darwin, he took all this information and from Charles Lyell and Hunt and said, hey, the earth changes. And if the earth changes, so might the animal's environment. Uh, and he took Lamarck's idea that animals do indeed change over time, and he tweaked it a little bit. Uh, Darwin believed that there was always variation in the population, right? So some giraffes are taller than others. Okay. Uh, now, sometimes in that variation or in the population, that variation is going to provide some giraffes with a longer neck, maybe, a better advantage on reaching the food in the trees. The short, shorter neck giraffes, they might have a more difficult time eating. If they have a difficult time eating, maybe they might not be leaving as many offspring because that's a very... Um, that's a, having kids is an energy intensive process. So we see it becoming more common as we see those animals with a beneficial trait becoming common because it helped them survive in its environment. That's how Darwin used Lamarck's and Hutton's and, and uh, Malthus's work. He said that he took all the previous work and lumped it into one and he said this is how animals change through natural selection and this is how animals change over time.